thank you everyone for having me here today. I'm going to start my talk with a little story about 3D printed guns because, well, for one big reason, that's the issue I wrote about that brought me here today. It was my story in the Star Tribune that I'm not sure if it was Brian or somebody noticed and uh, they reached out and said, hey, would you come speak to our group? And here I am. So it was around 2013 when Cody Wilson, the, the CEO, the founder of his company or even nonprofit, I, I don't remember if it's for profit, Defense Distributed, came up with a way, and remember this is back when 3D printing was just starting to take off and people were wide-eyed about that technology. What can we do with this? We can make Mickey Mouse figurines. What else can we make? Well, <coughs> Cody Wilson thought, we can make a gun. We can expand the Second Amendment to how it should truly be applied in his view. So he came up with a way to do it. He printed a 3D printed gun and he shot it and he recorded his video on YouTube. Well, within two days, the federal government said, take down that blueprint. Take down that schematic. And Wilson obeyed after just two days. But 100,000 people had already downloaded it. That was five years ago. Uh, it's been an ongoing legal saga for him to have the right to release these blueprints. Well, in this summer, he won. The Justice Department said, yep, you do have the right to do it. It's freedom of speech. And the date set for him to release the schematic was August 1. Well, you know, people like a deadline. People like that to motivate them. And that did motivate a lot of people to act. We had tweets such as this from a senator. Starting tomorrow, the Trump administration is going to allow people to start posting blueprints online showing how to make a fully functioning 3D printed gun at home. We cannot let that happen. I'm filing legislation today to block the release of these plans. And he did file legislation, but it didn't pass. What did pass, or I'm sorry, what, what did work was eight, I believe, state's attorneys general filed a grievance, I believe is the correct legal term, with a federal judge in Seattle saying, you must stop this. You must stop this company from releasing this, these plans. And the judge said, First Amendment concerns aside, you are right, this is about the safety of our communities. And he, um, an injunction, to try to use another legal term, um, to prevent the release of these plans. So, right at the 11th hour, the decision was made, and hooray, we stopped, we stopped the release of these plans. The same senator breaking, a federal judge has issued a temporary restraining order. His final sentence, now we need Congress to do the right thing and pass our bill to permanently block these blueprints from ever being published. Well, the next tweet in response to his announcement on Twitter was from some anonymous person saying, Ahem, here are the plans. <laughs> I clicked the link. Indeed. You can download the schematic for the Ghost Gunner, the AR-15 Lower, the Liberator, of course, the gun that made all the headlines in 2013. So I was struck by this as an image of two individuals in two different worlds. This is the traditional. This is, I think, what still most of us imagine, a world where when we see a social ill, we need to address it with law. And law will, of course laws aren't perfect, and of course laws aren't followed by everyone, but laws will do an adequate job of corralling and curbing the behavior of individuals in society so that we can have a more orderly world. But this guy, in my mind, he comes from a different world. 
he comes from a world where law just doesn't apply. At least in this case. Where law just doesn't work. You can make as much law... To, I mean, it, it, to me it's amazing when you think about this statement. Permanently block these blueprints from ever being published. That to me speaks of someone who has very little understanding of just how unwieldy the internet is from ever being published. Mm -hmm. I visualize it like this. So I use government and post-government as objectively as I can. This is the senator. Here are the individuals like him. They, 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 they look at the issues and they want to dictate how we should address issues by law. But we have a growing a world that looks at the issues and they don't care so much what the law says. It's not as impactful what the law says. What matters more are social trends. What matters more are companies' terms and services. You know, you don't need the law now to be censored on the internet, as we saw with Alex Jones. You know, he doesn't have to be kicked off in any legal way. He can just break the company's terms and service, and without social media and without email, you effectively don't exist online. My talk today is called Technology, Shaper of Society. And I propose that technology is shaping our world as it affects government in two ways. First way is as the 3D printed gun demonstrates. It takes social issues and it shifts it outside the scope of what government can corral. That's a very controversial topic. The less controversial topic is that technology shapes our world by solving problems that we only are able to face until the technology solves it. We, we're only able to face with law. So a quick example would be like DUIs uh, and drunk driving. We don't know how to stop it, so we try to wrestle with how to deal with perpetrators and what is break with, where should the line for blood alcohol limit be and that kind of thing. It's, it's, a, it's a clumsy, but it's the best we got. Well, maybe technology can help just solve the problem altogether and remove the need to have these legal debates. And then my third point is if indeed there is this monumental change in how we need to approach social ills because of the influence of technology, what will that readjustment of society look like? How will we need to approach situations without the reliance of law and government the way we've relied on it our whole lives? There's probably a couple of retorts in mind and I want to address those right away. You might say, well, wait a minute. Technology, yes, it can challenge the way government can function, but doesn't technology also help the government in its power? And yes, it does. It does. Um, obviously, the NSA has a huge reach because of technology. And Technology allows us to be ticketed without ever being pulled over in, in certain areas where that's legal. Technology can also be used to help government cooperate with the citizens and vice versa. So in Tampa, they have this alert Tampa system where you're notified on your mobile phone from the government when a hurricane is coming, when you need to be evacuated for other reasons, when there's uh, some serious crime going on in your neighborhood. Minneapolis has this with towing uh, when there's a snow emergency. I personally wish and have thought, boy, the cities, cities could really do a lot better technologically <laughs> when it comes to notifying people when not to park, when there's a street cleaning or a snow emergency. Obviously, these can be blown over in the wind to say nothing about being taken. And if it's not there and you happen to park there too bad, um, I conceive of a future where curbs Chips. have some kind of visual, digital visual surfacing and it will glow a color 
when you cannot park there. Funny thing too about these signs I read online is that people will buy them and put them up on their street <laughs> so no one parks on their spot. So eh, they're easy to hack too. But anyway, technology uh, can, can definitely be a friendly means from which to bring communities and their governments together. Um, and then again, technology does uh, empower government. I would say two things to that. One, that same technology can be turned on the government so that it can oust uh, corruption. This is an, a humorous case of a woman in New Jersey who was pulled over, actually her daughter and their friends were pulled over and she was in the car. The cops pulled them over, he was talking to them and then the mother came out and said, uh, why don't you kids go back there, I'm gonna talk to these officers. So they went back there and she's like, okay listen officers, my name is so and so, I'm part of the New Jersey Port Authority, can we just take care of this right here, is this stuff be that big a deal? And he's like, well ma'am, I'm sorry I was, I was talking to them, this doesn't concern you. Well it does concern me, thank you very much, that is my daughter and I'm so-and-so with the New Jersey Port Authority, blah, 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 blah. She tried and tried and tried to get them to just sweep it under the rug. They wouldn't relent. She, what's your badge number? I know your boss, blah, 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 blah. She didn't know that the dash cam was rolling the whole time. Yeah, and so yeah. this was on, it went viral. And I'm not sure if she resigned, but she sure had a lot of pressure too. Was she? Yeah. Okay. So technology, we, we turn that on those in power in the government and we can oust those actors that are uh, committing misdeeds. And then the other thing I would say is that I just believe that the technology that enables the public overcomes the power that the government has. Yes, there's the NSA. Uh, yes, they can just view us on the streets uh, with cameras without even having to pull us over and give us a ticket. But that, especially on these particular issues, they are moving faster than the government can catch up. And that's what my talk is about today. So regarding technology as a legal stymie, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is 3D printing. I already mentioned it with the guns. What about the debate around intellectual property? Obviously, intellectual property isn't gonna go away. It's like gun control isn't gonna go away. But it does bring up issues of intellectual property in that I can print off a Disney figurine and if I don't pay Disney for those blueprints, then they're not getting compensated for their intellectual property. I'm simply printing them out from my own home. One can assume that 3D printing manufacturers might try to install some software preventing um, you know, these, these kinds of things from being made illicitly, but it's possible and it's gonna be a harder thing to, uh, to corral with law. Next we have Prosecution and gambling, and the reason why these areas are going to be tougher to police is simply because we don't have to go anywhere to engage in them. We can do all that from the comfort of our own homes, which clearly this guy is doing with the <laughs> prostitutes, and this guy is doing by playing cards right there. The next thing is illegal narcotics, and I don't have to go to a dealer anymore on the street to get my drugs, my illegal drugs if I wanted to. I can now uh, go online, which it's the same guy, but this time he went to uh, <laughs> cocaine.com or something. And of course, when you're ordering drugs, you're a lot more excited, so there you go. <laughs> we laugh here at the futurists too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay, no. Uh, well, no, I mean, there's actually a really good piece from CBC, Canadian Broadcasting, or CTV, I'm sorry or maybe it was CBC, whatever, um, an expose on the dark web and this guy in like Calgary, Alberta, getting uh, drugs from other dealers in Canada, they were just simply shipped to him. And I, I went online and I looked like that <laughs> and I found, um, well this is, this is the, so this is like a laboratory that they busted and, and you know, this, this technology too is, is improving. It's not just the idea of ordering drugs online, it's how easy it is to make them at home. And so they busted, the, here's a pill counter, I think one of these is a pill press. And you're able to make ecstasy and you know, you've got your other powders and other 
illegal substances and you go on one of these dark web websites and it's for sale and there's reviews yeah. just like eBay you know this one has 4.9 stars so that's a pretty good uh, crystal meth high quality shards and then lastly it's harder to track the purchases uh, you're not doing it with Visa you're doing it with cryptocurrency when you use a cryptocurrency it's much much harder to track and so you can just use Bitcoin or Ether or whatever one you want and buy your drugs on the dark web have them mailed to you and no one knows so that concludes my first way technology disrupts to use a cliche term in tech uh, the legal system 3d printing devices uh, and, 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 and cryptocurrencies. Yes, sir. Do you have any idea what percentage of drugs are distributed uh, at, at, in the way that you talked about? No idea. I don't. It would seem to me, just like Jason said, that, um, that if in fact we can distribute drugs in this way, that's a good thing. Well, as the, as the young man in the article who was anonymous from the Canadian article said, you find a trusted seller who's ranked high as you would on eBay or Amazon. They're, they have good reviews, they have a safer product, quote unquote safer product, and yeah, you're not getting stuff that is laced with something lethal. Like fentanyl and prints. Well, in addition to that, you don't have people killing each other. With Correct. Turf wars. Right. Correct. This makes some people nervous. If not in this room, then certainly outside in this room, right? It doesn't just bother some people that we can't rely on government to stop drugs, to stop gambling, to stop prostitution, to stop the proliferation of guns. It kind of upsets the whole social order of law isn't there. Well, what's going to be there? And that makes some people nervous. You know, what are they going to do without the law there? So I, I think one of the things we should be considering is that um, every single uh, government is not as um, if I use the word improperly benevolent as the United States of America, and that uh, there may be ways that, that, that government can control this kind of technology, but it is a very intrusive government mm -hmm. that would be doing so. And that may be the way we go into the future if we're, if we're more concerned with, um, uh, with, uh, with controlling this kind of behavior if people become overly concerned about it, uh, government, if it wants to, and it's given the, um, the power to do so, can probably find a way to control it. But the other parts of that control uh, psychology might not be so much fun. Thank you. Um, that leads nicely to this point, which That's is... That's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> the future is snow, whatever my next slide yes. is. Yes, <laughs> we're good at that. <laughs> One thing I want to say to people who are nervous about the idea of these areas of our lives being kind of, I think, uh, spreading outside the realm of law is, and I say this cautiously because it's not very politically correct, but I think it's safe to say we can compare the kinds of people that used to be in government to the kinds of people who are in government today. Um, you know, this was, these were the, the men, and if allowed, the kind of women who started the country. And these are the kinds of bumper stickers we see today. <laughs> and I think no matter what, where you lie in the political spectrum, we point out individuals who represent us in Washington, do you want these men and women in office today trying to shape our society? Um, I don't. So I'd rather have it be on us than on them, frankly. That's just my belief. But if our elected leaders were chosen by a random lottery? That would probably be better. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> could, I mean. It's a hypothetical. It's a hypothetical. The other. Uh, and, and then I, I, I do think that on top of the people in Washington just not being the best and the brightest, there is 
the alternative is better uh, for, for, for th there is an alternative better way and I'll get to that at the end. Right now I want to talk about technology and the other way it, 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 it disrupts law and that's by rendering them unnecessary. This is more of a bright side, like few people are going to find this controversial, this is all good. So for instance, the idea of organ markets, well the question I have to ask is do you think you have the right to sell your own kidney to an individual in need if they wish to buy it from you? Do you think you have that right? It's just a rhetorical question, you don't no, have to answer. No, we don't. Well, what, 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 what do you mean by right, right? You may think you have the right, but the law doesn't agree with you. So it's illegal to sell organs. It's illegal for me to sell an organ out of my body and give it to somebody else. <clears throat> I, might, I might say, hey, my body, my choice. I might say, hey, I can do with my body what I want. I'm free to sell an ear if I want. Screw you, I can do what I want with my body. I can engage in any transaction I want. But organ markets are illegal and enforced because of the implication beyond just the initial sell, which is if we open up a market of organs, it'll be an area of healthcare only available to the wealthy, which happens now anyway, but it would be more so. And then second, it would potentially exploit the poor who need that 50 grand for a kidney. So almost everywhere in the world, organ markets are e illegal. One country, they're legal, at least this was about five years ago when I read about it. It was, you can buy a kidney in Iran and there's no kidney shortage there. Uh, here there is and people die waiting for one, so it's tragic. But what if instead of having to have that moral debate, we could just get rid of the issue altogether? Mm -hmm. This isn't here, but it's coming. Right? We've printed off organs that don't have a mechanical function like an ear. Right? We saw the one on the back of that rat, that poor rat. <laughs> um, the second issue, drunk driving. We, we argue about how to deal with this. Should it be 0.08? No, it should be 0.06. Uh, 0.10 is fine for me. I'm seasoned drink, drink, drunk driver. <laughs> um, and then what do you do when we catch someone? Treatment, jail, community service. Go speak to kids about the harms of drunk driving, whatever. Well, how about we just get rid of the issue altogether with self-driving cars? Mm -hmm. Now, you'd still have to be sober, I'm, I'm assuming. But self-driving cars, if they function at half as well as they're touted, will reduce accidents due to drinking and driving. It, maybe it's too new to, to, to know, but it's, I, I would guess, if I was a betting man, I would bet that Uber and Lyft are reducing on drinking and driving. They're accessible in areas where taxis are not, such as Bemidji, Minnesota, where I'm, near where I'm from. Overfishing and other issues having to do with meat cultivation, livestock. Clearly there's an issue of overfishing and the fishing stocks depleting. Well, rather than having to worry about regulation of, of, of fish and livestock, and there's also the environmental impact of livestock that I, that I read about. If we can grow meat outside the animal, mm -hmm. that can take care of a lot of the problems there too. So these are just a few ways in which technology renders I put this very black and white. Technology rendering law unnecessary. Obviously, it won't. There'll be regulations around um, self-driving cars and so forth. But the idea is that rather than having to argue about which side or which uh, avenue we should take legally speaking, a technology comes along that doesn't just help us move the line in the right spot, but it helps just get rid of the issue altogether. Oh, and this is just a review of those, of those issues that I think will be impacted in a very positive way because of technology. So we've talked about how technology disrupts a law's ability to function. And then we've talked about technology's ability to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, technology um, making some laws unnecessary. What will that mean for us? Well, I think with a weakening, a, a waning state, which is what I observe, it's 
especially in the last 10 years, and the empowerment to individuals due to technology and just social media and organizing and so forth, is that it's going to mean more responsibility lies on us. So rather than looking to the city or the state or the country to fixing problems that are persistent, we can, we can address these problems directly. And we also, we already know that there are problems in society that the government just hasn't been able to dent. Or maybe just dent a little bit, whether it's addiction, whether it's inner city violence. That's actually a, uh, whether it's education and the, the problems of public schools. I would probably add voter apathy to that list. Well, so. yeah. I mean, the whole political process, I think, is, I think it's a little antiquated. Personally, I think government is becoming kind of a, you know, the, 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 the drug one was uh, one I'll talk a, a bit more about right now on that point, in that, you know, these synthetic drug makers, they'll come out with a new molecule, they'll make it, and they'll release it, and they'll sell it in packaging out in the open at a head shop or a marijuana shop. And it's legal until it's not. <laughs> until until they write legislation saying, okay, this particular drug is illegal, okay, take them off the shelf, but then they just tweak it or find a new one and they release it again. And the process of creating a bill and passing it is slow. Technology is way faster. So um, I think more and more is going to be relied on individuals. and, and This gets to actually where I think this talk leads to. This is sort of the I think the pinnacle of this talk is this means more social engagement from us. This is myself with the founder of Mad Dads. It's an inner city group. They drive around in their, uh, their famously green van around north, the, the north side of Minneapolis and south side. And they look for, they look for youth that are just kind of lost on, an, on, on a midnight on a Friday night. You know, they might be hanging out on the corner, they look like they might be up to maybe something not quite good, and they just walk right up to him and talk to him. I can't go to the north side and do what he does, but I can support the work that he does. I can help their website with their writing. I can donate to them. And donating is made a lot more easy. Well, one, we're much more connected to communities that we never were connected to before because of the internet and social media. And secondly, it's much more, it's much more easy for us to support groups like Mad Dads, right? Go fund me. PayPal, I don't need to mail them a check. It's just so much more convenient now. Okay, yeah. What in your experience over the last decade or two has made you feel that we're, we're likely to take more responsibility rather than less? Well, I've seen a lot of social movements grow, right? Black Lives Matter, Tea Party, um, just, just two examples. I mean, the rise of these popularist political candidates, even though I'm talking about the waning government, the rise of Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump past the establishment picks, I think shows that there's empowerment in the people. Um, as far as social issues go, I would love to see more work done uh, with groups like Mad Dads because I think they're getting to the heart of what's the problem. But people seem to be more focused on outrage than they are on, I think, nurturing and really helping. The next thing I want to talk about is that on top of us having to, I think, take some more responsibility on ourselves, the, the, the fighting between ideological groups, I think, will simmer down some in, in a time where government isn't as vital in, where law isn't as vital in the social behavioral aspects of our society. So, in other words, right now, if you or I have a debate about, say, um, abortion, it's a heated debate because it's such a big topic. But I think it's also heated because the winner of that debate on a national level gets to decide the laws. Let's look at or organ markets, actually. So I might think I have every right to sell my organ. And there might be someone out there who needs a kidney and is willing to give me $50,000 for it. And I'll argue passionately, and so will he, because he's dying, uh, that we should have this right to do this transaction. 
But the person over here who thinks, no, 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 we can't allow organ markets, they'll argue passionately too because they're worried about the implications of having a market. The argument is passionate because whoever wins the argument gets to tell the other side what to do. Well, in a future where you can have whatever morals you want, but they're not going to they're not going to dictate the way I behave, then suddenly your morals are a lot less threatening to me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So right now we might argue it's a woman's right to choose. A fetus is a human life. But what about technological advanced birth control or even incubation where we don't have to abort a fetus anymore? Now the issue goes from the law being the arbiter of morals to we're just going to have a discussion about morality and ethics without there being the threat of force behind it. We're so used to a world where law is morals. But that is, that's what's going to be, I think, a significant change moving, moving, moving ahead. It also works in areas where technology doesn't fix the problem or technology simply disrupts the government avail, avail, uh, ability to work. We need sensible gun control. The Second Amendment is clear. Okay. I mean, but in, in, in a day, hypothetically, where anyone can 3D print their own gun, you go ahead and have your idea, but it won't have, again, force behind it with law. So we're going to have to go from moral enforcement, we'll go from law to choice. You have to argue for your point. You have to, you have to get someone to change their mind, which I think is what um, anti-gun advocates need to do with gun people and what I think anti-abortion activists need to do with the, 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 the abortion debate. Get law out of it. I've written this article too. I said, if you want to end abortion, don't, don't try to legislate it. Appeal to their better, <clears throat> appeal morally. Offer services to pregnant women, but keep it out of the legislature. But they like to make laws, you know. People like that. They should make a law against that. <laughs> there ought to be a law. There ought to be a law. I mean, part, of, a part of it is human nature. People like to exert their will over others to feel well, superior. And thankfully, technology will disable that urge. So right now we've got it. So this, this is a sandbox and this is an issue. Oh, it should be 0 0.10 blood alcohol to be illegal. No, 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 no. It should be 0 0.08. Okay, fine. It'll be 0 0.08. Well, the beauty of technology is that it's simply going to make the sand go away. And we can live in a time where we can have more peace between ideologies. This is a Hollywood Disney version of the future, admittedly. Yeah. This did not actually really happen. This photo. Yeah, this photo is real. It actually did. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People really like that photo. Um, I was looking for, I, I googled like conservative and liberal getting along, and then this pops up, and that was the best one I could find. So more peace between ideologies, because maybe there's less of a need for them. Because now we don't have to fight for laws. There is law attached to it. Or because we simply need to get over them. Because now we don't have, you know, it's like, man, kids are failing school. What's the first thing we think? What's the city doing about that? What's the schools doing about that? Or when there's a lot of violence in the inner city, oh, what's the city going to do about that? You know, we, I think we live in a better world if we stop asking those questions. What are they going to do about it? And we, by necessity, were forced to ask, well, geez. Maybe I should be a big brother or a big sister. Maybe I should donate to an organization that helps steer wayward youth back onto the right track. So to recap this third point, more responsibility on us, moral enforcement from law to choice, and more peace between ideologies, and getting us back to our um, initial drawing or illustration I don't know where we are as far as do more people live in this world with the senator or do they live in this world with the guy who tweeted, uh, dude, the gun schematics are right here. <laughs> oh, and by the way, they're being released presently anyway. 
because the Seattle judge increased the injunction saying, uh, okay, yeah, we're going to continue making it illegal to post them online, but he didn't say you couldn't sell them. So now Cody Wilson is selling them at any price as we speak. They're out. And they were already out. So, I mean, it's all kind of a silly debate. Yeah. Well, I think that technology has eliminated some need for laws and government, but it's going to bring a big one where we need a lot more government than we think. And that's going to be <clears throat> automation and robotization. Mm -hmm. I think the next 10 years are going to be convulsive as far as losing actual jobs. And so people, as you automate and roboticize and put AI systems, mm -hmm. that maybe only half the people that are working will be working. So the question is, now, if the government doesn't do it, you're going to end up with let's say the owner of the factory who is 100% robots now. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have any employees. And he can sell a product much cheaper, but who does he sell it to when nobody has a job? Right. So they have no money. So, the, so then maybe his robots should be taxed and then money given out of Social Security at, at starts at right. any age. This would be very governmental. And yep. I think the U.S. will be not doing much, but they'll be looking to other countries who are successfully handling this problem. I agree. And that's going to be a lot of government. I, I agree. Um, that can be automated, though, too. I, the point about AI and, and the, uh, that the gentleman here mentioned uh, right away. I'm a gentleman? Um, until well, I get to know you, yes. Yeah, until you know For right. purposes yeah. of this meeting. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, and then obviously if, if someone commits murder, there's, there's courts and police and all that. Um, Universal basic income. All this stuff, I think, can be done and distributed. I guess what I'm talking more about are the the tentacles of government that kind of grew in the last century into the drug war. Um, yeah, gun regulation, things like that, that are being now kind of withered away by technology. That, that that's really, I think, the target here. And so, my last slide is that. Let's say we're in a world today, I don't know where we are as far as which side is bigger, but I do believe firmly that in the future, we're gonna see uh, this happen. So that that which happens at the government level is vital, but it's just not as significant. It's not the go-to, you know? We're looking at trends in society, like a company says we're not gonna um, serve we're not going to serve a certain kind of person, or we're not going to bake a cake, as the famous example in the news today. Well, the government is trying to wrestle with that, but does that really matter as much? I mean, it'll matter if the government says they can't do it, but if the government allows it, the, 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 the public are still going to go out there and pick it. You know, they're, they're going to decide whether that place can stay open or not, I think. Or they're not going to go there for business, right? It, it, it's going to be decided, I think, at a community level more than at a federal level. And then, you know, a company itself will determine, like Facebook will say, sorry, you can't, you can't, uh, you're banned, you're not able to take part in this conversation any longer, and there'll be more terms and services that are uh, Im impacting our freedoms than, uh, than, than, than what a government does. So, and, and as we grow more in this realm, then um, we and need, we'll I add. think, to keep these three uh, in mind. Okay. One thing where society is getting involved more and more is with this. You can't do something without being photographed by, or videoed by somebody somewhere mm -hmm. with their iPhone. Yeah. Also, they're getting more and more cameras on the street, so mm -hmm. I think the technology of Everybody always being seen can be Big Brother or it can be a... And like I said, yeah, it can be Big Brother, but it also puts the spotlight back on government. And so when police act out, it's all over the news. And then when, gov when, when government is corrupt, like the New Jersey lady, that's out there in the news yep. too. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think that, I think that th there's three things we talk about, when some, which is What's, what is uh, possible, what's probable, and what's preferable, mm. okay? I, I think that you've made a case for it being possible, mm -hmm. okay? 
and I think you you're, you're making a, a case that is preferable. What I don't hear is why it's probable. Um, the the um, the the fact that you'd like it to be probable mm -hmm. is not enough. You mean these points? Yes. Because it's it's definitely happening as far as gun control and the war on drugs and prostitution and gambling. I mean, those things are just where, where isn't it happening? What I'm saying is what is probable with my presentation is the ability to do these vices, to, to, to act in these ways that the government tries to, you know, lasso, they, they can't, and it's out of the realm of any meaningful control. I, I, hope, that, I hope that this view is, is, is good, it comes to, but my experience is that there are some very powerful forces that uh, have a lot of power and money and, uh, and preferences in the system that we now have, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm concerned that uh, it's not, it's not going to be as easy a transition as you might think. Well, the, the system we have now is is changing, and and under the present system, yes. But in, if technology advances in any way in the future, we won't have the present system. We'll still be dealing with human beings. Mm -hmm. They'll have the same nature. Yes, sir. One of the problems in all of this is dealing with the nature of people. Mm -hmm. An old saying, we're contributing to the number of people, that 90% of people want to be told what to do. 9% mm -hmm. want to tell the other 90% what to do. And those are the ones who really cause trouble. And the 1% yeah, it, it, it'll be kicking the can down the road, I guess might be a more fitting analogy. So it'll go from government to maybe um, power-hungry community leaders or even non-profit leaders. Like this, this V.J. Smith guy might get a lot of power. I, he, I don't see this happening. <laughs> I'm just saying men in his position who are heads of organizations. So it goes from the city trying to fix violence to non-profits or companies or community leaders, yes, the, the power will still be, but I think it's it's a step in the right direction in that it's distributing power from a monolithic state to a, a disbursement amongst different groups. But yes, within the realm, um, when I say more responsibility on the people, I, I had stressed this in, when I was rehearsing this talk, that it's the opportunity to be more responsible. It's the opportunity to step up. And you're right, most people won't take it, but some will. And I think it'll be an improvement from what we're at now. Okay. Yes? Question. Uh, I understand, I, I can see how uh, evolving technology is certainly going to undermine the ability of government to enforce whatever law. I'm not sure I see yet uh, how evolving technology is going to facilitate the increased taking of responsibility on the part of the groups that currently don't. Can you expand on that? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the million dollar question, and, and it is yet to be answered. I, um, I, the internet allows us to organize and um, I think take charge, um, getting groups together, um, working together for a cause. It isn't a point that I've been able to, um, I think. I'd like to see it happen. Yeah, it, 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 it's 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 a pre, it's a prefer. You know, I think the the, the gentleman. My name is gentleman. gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> There's two of you. It is a. It, it, it's valid. It's valid. This this does stem on hope Re and really it, this this talk. Um, this talk is a bit of a motivational talk, in its, in at, at its core saying, hey, these, the, the power structure is changing, let's step up and fill the void, right? Um, and I think it can be done, and I think, I think it will. I do. I really do. Um, but maybe I'm just naive. But, it, but it's not something I've been able to strongly demonstrate. Not yet.
Yeah, I think one of the things I would be very happy to see is a point where it's actually the government which is permitted to govern rather than the um, corporate <laughs> sponsors of the government that yeah. is permitted to govern. And that may be the first step in this kind of revolutionary evolution. That, um, well, I see, go I see money in politics as 3D printed gun schematics. It's, we're going to have to move past, I personally think we have to move past the, the power vested in government because we're not going to get money out of government. I think that's, that's somehow trying to put the toothpaste back in the tube. Um, so rather than try to figure out a way to get money out of politics and government, I would advocate a way to take the power away from government. Yeah, yeah, and I think evolution, social evolution, and technology will do that. Not irrelevant, but less relevance. That's that's how I see it.